You'll notice that for this video I've hopped right into my spreadsheet. This video we're going to look at how to calculate analysis of variance and I'll show you two different ways of doing it. One way is using a spreadsheet and the other way is using the General Social Survey and the SDA software. Doing this by hand is very difficult and cumbersome and I really don't recommend it. This is the time to figure out how to use a spreadsheet. Here's the problem I've decided to work on today. In the GSS, respondents were asked, what do you think is the ideal number of children for a family to have? The valid responses that I'm going to consider range from 0 to 7, where each of those is the number of children they think makes an ideal number of children in a family, except for 7, which is really 7 or more. So that's one of our open-ended or open-coded uh, categories. I've taken a sample of 40 individuals from the 2012 General Social Survey, and I've taken 10 each for four different marital statuses. And you can see this in the spreadsheet above. We have the responses of 10 married individuals, 10 divorced individuals, 10 separated, and 10 um, never married individuals. I've dropped the case for the widowed, the people who are widowed. I've gone ahead and calculated a couple of statistics here, and I've highlighted some things with color. I'm using the color coding here to indicate that what we're going to be testing is the difference in means across these categories, across the different colored columns. Our overall or grand mean is 2.55. That is, out of these 40 respondents, if I average all those numbers, it's 2.55. I can also average within marital status, so the average ideal number of children for married, couple, for married people is 2.6. For divorced is 2.3, separated 2.5, and never married is 2.8. Our null hypothesis is that those four means are basically all the same. Our alternative hypothesis is that at least two of those means are sufficiently different to exceed our expectations of chance and allow us to reject the null hypothesis. I've set up the whole table here, and it took a little time to do it, but it'll make it a little bit easier than watching me type in all the formulas, but I will explain them as I go. To build the ANOVA table, we need to calculate the total sum of squares, the between group sum of squares, and the within group sum of squares, and then use those numbers to build the ANOVA table. If you look at the tabs at the bottom of the spreadsheet, you can see that we're on the setup tab, which just shows us our 40 cases and it calculated a few means so we can lay the problem out and I'm going to walk through each one of those sums of squares individually. Let's go ahead and look at our total sum of squares. Well here I've replicated the table on the left and I've gotten rid of the color coding and I did that because when we do the total sum of squares we don't consider our independent variable which in this case is marital status. It's not relevant. We're simply going to calculate our sum of squares it, with reference to the grand or overall mean. You can see from the formula um, how we calculate this particular sum of squares. I'm going to go ahead and highlight one of the cells in the spreadsheet. This is the first person who's married and if you look in the upper left hand corner you can see the formula. You've seen me use these formulas before and if I hit F2 you can see the things that are highlighted. So we're going to calculate B3, the content of B3, which is the green cell, green outline cell, which is 2, minus the quantity 2.55, which is the grand mean, and that's the orange outlined cell. And then I'm going to square those values. B3 does not get any of the dollar signs because that's a relative address in both the row and column dimension. And the E15 address, the grand mean address, I use those dollar signs because it's an absolute address both in terms of column and row. If Once I establish this first formula in cell F3, I simply copied it to the remaining cells. That is, I copied and then I highlighted all these cells like I'm doing here and pasted. So I've taken each of these values over here on the left. I've taken the difference between the cell value and the grand mean, and I've squared it. When we sum those values up, we get our total sum of squares. If you look at the cell I15, you can see I've used one of the spreadsheet functions, which is the sum function. And When I hit the F2 key, you can see that the green area that's, that's in the box is the area that I've summed. Well, the formula shows us that I need to calculate the individual squared deviations and then sum them to get my total sum of squares, 
which I do here, and I get 23.9. We also know that our degrees of freedom for the total sum of squares is n minus 1. I have 40 cases, so my degrees of freedom is 39. So there's one of our table entries for our ANOVA table. Let's go ahead and jump on to the within group sum of squares page. I've added the colored highlighting back in because now when we do within group sum of squares, we're going to calculate a variance, but not around the grand mean. We're going to calculate a variance for each marital status around the mean of that marital status. So in this table, at the bottom of the column of the raw numbers, I've calculated the mean for each column. For married individuals, the average number of children, which makes an ideal family, is 2.6. For divorced respondents, 2.3, and so forth. Let's go ahead and look at a formula here in cell F3. And when I hit F2, again, we can see exactly what's being calculated. I'm taking the value in cell B3, which is green, and I'm subtracting the value in cell B13, that is the mean for the married people, which is 2.6, and then I'm squaring that number. Look carefully at that B13 address, where in the spreadsheet before I used an absolute address pinning down both row and column. This is going to pin down the row, but not the column. So when I copy this formula to these other cells, it will copy correctly. Again, my total sum of squares, so now I'm looking in cell I14, and I'll hit the F2 key. You can see highlighted the table on the right, which is all of those individual squared deviations, and I've used the function to sum them. My within group sum of squares is 22.6, and we know that there are n minus j, or 36 degrees of freedom. This becomes another entry in our ANOVA table. Let's move on to the between group sum of squares. The between group sum of squares are usually the easiest to calculate. In this case, I only have four group means, and I've listed them, married 2.6, divorced 2.3, and so forth. I also have my grand mean. So we can look at the formula for this problem, for this quantity, and see that we're also calculating a variance, but we're going to calculate the variance of the group means around the grand mean. The col this column labeled C are all my individual squared deviations, and when I highlight my SSB, that is my, my between group sum of squares, and I'll hit the F2 key, you can see that I'm multiplying those values by 10, the number of cases in each category, and I'm summing those values up. My between group sum of squares is 1.3, and I have J minus 1, or 3 degrees of freedom. I need the degrees of freedom and the sums of squares from each of these different sums of squares, the total, the within, and the between, so I can assemble my ANOVA table. And I'm going to do that on this tab down here labeled ANOVA. And we'll zoom in a little bit and take a close look at this table. All I've done is listed my sums of squares. The ANOVA table is laid out always from top to bottom. You have your between sums of squares, your within sum of squares, and total sum of squares. And I'm just using the values I calculated elsewhere in the spreadsheet. 1.3, 22.6, and 23.9. Remember, I could have used subtraction to calculate these as well. That is, I only need two pieces of the sums of squares, two values of the sums of squares to solve for the third. The column labeled DF, I'm using my degrees of freedom. And then I'm using a formula for my mean squares. Remember, our mean squares is our, our sum of squares divided by the associated degrees of freedom. So if I highlight this cell D2, you can see that the value that's being calculated is the contents of cell B2 div divided by the contents of cell C2. That is our sum of squares divided by the degrees of freedom. Same thing when I move down a row and I look at the, at the formula for the mean square here, I'm taking the quantity in the cell B3, the 22.6, and I'm dividing by its degrees of freedom, which is 36. The last formula in my spreadsheet is my F statistic. And here I've calculated this as the ratio of the two mean squares. That is, it's the mean square between divided by the mean square within. We know that a large F statistic will lead to rejection, and that a, an F statistic of 1 is pretty consistent with a null hypothesis. We've observed some individual variation 
in these particular averages or means, but they were not sufficiently large to allow us to reject the null hypothesis. Now technically, I need to go to an F table and look up my F critical value, but this F statistic is so small, I don't think I'm going to waste my time doing it. I know that I'm going to be unable to reject the null hypothesis. And I attribute those individual variations to sampling error and measurement error, and not to true differences in marital status and people in those marital statuses' belief about the ideal number of children. We can also solve this problem using SDA. Now I've gone ahead and fired up my SDA program and I'm going to come up here and hover over the analysis button and I'm going to come over and go to comparison of means. The comparison of means will allow us to do the equivalent ANOVA. I'm not going to take a random sample, I'm going to calculate this on all of the data available to us. Our dependent variable is our continuous variable, the thing that we're going to calculate an average on and that's going to be this child ideal variable. Our row variable is going to be our categorical variable, in this case marital. And then I'm going to use some filtering here. I'm going to first filter that year is 2012 and that my marital ranges from 1 to 3 to 4 to 5. I want to make certain that I have no weight selected and then when I move down and look at my options I don't need complex standard errors. We'll go ahead and take the standard deviation. I want ANOVA statistics and I don't need a bar chart for this. And we'll run this table. Here I've misspelled child ideal. It would be nice if SDA would give us a hint about what the variable name is, but it doesn't know. So let me try this again. That did it. So a little extra work. I forgot the mnemonic. This is a variable I have trouble remembering. But we finally got it right. In this table, for each of our marital statuses, we get the average number of the ideal number of children in a family, the standard deviation and number of cases. Our ANOVA table at the bottom provides the information that we created by hand for our sample of 40 cases. Notice that our F statistic here is larger, 1.227, and we get a p-value. So the p-value is very helpful here, so I don't need to go to the F table. I just have to compare that p-value to my critical value. If I had used alpha 0 0.05, well this number clearly exceeds that, I would fail to reject the null. And it doesn't matter if I use 0 0.01 or 0 0.001, this p-statistic is too large to allow us to reject the null hypothesis. So while I had an idea that one's marital status may affect their opinions about how many children make up an ideal family, I didn't find enough difference in these means to satisfy or to allow me to make that conclusion. So instead, I failed to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that marital status appears to be uncorrelated with or doesn't affect people's attitudes about the ideal number of children in a family. As usual, if you have any questions, please contact us and we'll do our best to answer them.